The SureFit weight track on the Titleist TSR3 driver allows golfers to manipulate the center of gravity. Today, we are going to test the extremes in the heel, in the toe, and in the neutral setting. See what Thomas delivers on TrackMan for us. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold with Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing here at the Minnetonka Tour Van. And today we've got the Titleist TSR3 driver, Thomas. And specifically, we're looking at the SureFit weight track on the sole of that club, where golfers can manipulate this weight, move it in the heel, move it in the toe to create a draw or fade bias. And today we want to find out exactly how much of a difference that makes. Right, so I think the most important thing here before we get testing is this, you've got to remind people that this is, is a bias. Yeah. It's not going to solve everything. Yeah. If your club path and your face angle is at extreme numbers, all of a sudden the ball's curving to the right or to the left, you still need to fix your, your path yeah. and face angle. It's not going to solve everything. Mm -hmm. However, it can be a good bias to help you know, move that center of gravity. Maybe you're hitting on the toe or the heel of the driver move that center of gravity away from that position or towards that position to straighten out shots. Yeah, yeah, and I think one thing that we should also clarify too is that in a fitting, you guys will go to the, the, the hosel too, the sure fit hosel um, on drivers uh, for Titleist, for instance, and go that way and adjust that first before going to the weight on the center of gravity. But, because uh, like you said, this is more of a bias where that could actually mean more of a correction, but it does depend on what the golfer is looking for. If they're maybe just slightly missing one way, they can use this and it can correct it a little bit for them. Yeah, I mean, the head, head design, the loft on the club, the, the hosel settings you talk about, you know, talking about lie angle, mm -hmm. you know, that's going to make probably the biggest influence on yeah. that shot direction. Now we're getting to that phase at the end of a fitting where we're, we're, trying, to, we're trying to see if we can get any more gains, maybe yeah. we can get a sneaky extra couple yards of more curve to the right or to the left yeah. to really performance tune a player's golf, right. golf swing and kind of see where the ball ends up. Sure, well let's let's hit five shots in kind of the, I guess, T2, the neutral, and then the H2 settings. And we'll see what kind of ball flight differences we see up there on track, man. Well, let's do it. Oh, that one was good. It's gonna draw straight. back left. Oh. oh. Never mind. That was better. So it started That's straighter because my path was beauty. Way better. One five zero on the smash. Oh goodness. Yep. 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 Well, so five shots, Thomas, and. A little bit lean and right with the, the neutral setting there. Yeah, my average curve on the ball is 16 feet to the right. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, let's put this all the way to H2, which is the most drawer bias yeah. position. See if that does help me at all. I'm just fighting a little bit of the right ball right now, but it'll be interesting yeah. to see if that helps manipulate anything. Yeah. And then we'll go to the other extreme and see what, what happens mm -hmm. there too. That was a good swing. Head curve to the left on it. There we go. Progress. Who said it's a bias? Wow. That's going to be left, too. Okay. Wow. Well, we're now done with the heel setting, Thomas, and we definitely saw a difference there. Um, at least I was just mostly looking at dispersion. So I'll expand that here and you can, I mean, did you expect it to be that different? I, I did not. Yeah. So I was struggling with those first five yeah. balls. We even hit a couple in there that I told you, hey, we have to lead out because they even further right. I was struggling yeah. with my swing today. Yeah. But magically, uh, I'm, I'm not going to lie, like, I'm not trying to manipulate this or anything like yeah. that. I'm surprised how much easier it was to turn over. And so do you like, think that was, it was your swing with like the weight in the club or what, like, what did, because we have the swing dad up here yep. and it's like your so club, club path pass. and your face angle are both, you know, much better, right? Like your, right. your face angle especially closed 1.6 degrees more with the heel setting. So, yep. and you, do you mean, and then your face to pass is actually negative here. So. 
uh, yeah, interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. And I'm, I'm focusing on that curve, 31 feet to the left versus 16 Correct. feet to the, to the right. I mean, that, that's a big, you know, significant difference. I'm a, little, I'm a little shocked at what it did, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yes, I was <laughs> fighting the right ball, and naturally, as a golfer that's fighting the right ball, I'm probably going to try and find a way to not miss With it as, swing as a much bit. to the right. Yeah. But I, was, I just tried to slow down my tempo on those five swings. And maybe that actually helped it too, but I was like, just, just let, let's do this work and see what, yeah. what happens. It's funny that I didn't you say try you and fight it. It's and funny you say you slowed down the tempo because you actually swung faster and Slow generated world, more huh? speed. Um, yeah. Actually, look at the spin, how similar that is. It's um, crazy. So interesting now, we got to go, unfortunately, I don't know if you want to do this, <laughs> even, but we got to go and put it in the toe now. So yeah. knowing what we know, uh, we should expect the ball to stay out right a little bit, but I kind of, I don't know how much of a difference it'll make because we saw a ton of it here with the, the heel. So, yeah. I mean. I think this is a good reminder, you know, a, a nice smooth tempo is a good thing. So I'm gonna try and slow my tempo down again for this yeah. for the last test and just trust and so hopefully see, see some similar numbers. But mm -hmm. I, I was a little surprised that how much it was easier it was for me to turn over. And I think, I mean, it, does hit, did hit location change? I think that one it, might it be might one as well thing to kind of take huh? a look at. Yeah, so we'll go. So we got, here's where you were hitting it. Uh, neutral position. Neutral this so usually my slightly tall, which is kind of where you usually my, hit my it, My right? favorite spot, right? <laughs> right. And the heel, you're dead center. Yeah. So uh, now. That is really interesting. But the interesting thing is, with neutral, you. that would promote the turnover, wouldn't it? Right. Yeah, that's, uh, that's very interesting. You would expect, when I catch it on the toe, the gear effect would help turn it over. It would it turn it over bit. generally. Yeah. Hmm. But you're hitting, the, yeah. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, and I usually like that. I like to be slightly high right. tall. Yeah. Interesting. Good. Yeah. Interesting numbers. All right. Well, <laughs> I, I guess we don't really know what to expect here with the toe setting. <laughs> well, let's hit it and see what happens. Swinging it better and better every time. Wow. There's like not really curve right now in those last couple. Right. You might want another one. That's really far right. That's not that far Actually, right. Actually, wasn't that Look bad. Look at that. that All good. right. Well, there you go. All right. So five shots, the T2 toe setting. Um, I'll expand the dispersion. So. Definitely a, the right bias on a couple of shots. You also had the one turnover here left. Um, but overall, you didn't really curve the ball much with that, because yeah, on average, it was two feet to the right with that T2 setting. You had a couple that were pretty straight, a couple that didn't really curve much. You can see there's two feet, eight feet, you know. Yep. So, um, what, I mean, what are your thoughts on, on that setting there? I know it's probably not comfortable for you after going to the heel setting and hitting so many good balls. I, th I find it interesting looking at the spin rate. Yeah. If you take a look at the spin rate, you know, it was significantly lower than the other two. Mm -hmm. The other two are about the same. So, I mean, uh, you know, moving that center of gravity maybe out towards the toe, maybe forced me to catch it more on the toe to reduce mm. the spin. Yeah. Um, you know, we talked about gear effect a little bit before when comparing the other settings. Yeah. I'm not sure, so let's take a look and see where I was hitting it. Yeah. Yeah, so, so it's back out where I was originally, but it was help, you know, it was almost like it was matching up. Yeah, it's almost like, because that was one of the things that, that Titus has, has told us kind of in a way is with using that SureFit um, weight track, the one way to, to help golfers is by, if they're missing toe, move the weight into the toe because that creates more energy towards the ball and impact. So it's more like a center face contact. Right. Um, and vice versa, if they're missing in the heel, move the weight in the heel and you'll get, you know, better, I guess, energy at, at impact. So um, interesting that we're seeing that kind of come to fruition here because you did hit it the furthest um, and you had really good speed there um, with that with that setting there uh, hitting it off the toe with the weight in the toe yeah no it's 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 an intriguing you know it's nice to play around with these settings yeah. with with customers and just see if there's anything that kind of bias that's going to help you know the the left bias you know h2 it helped it yeah. helped me turn it over so if that's the type of shot shape you like I don't know if it just gave me a little bit more confidence at just knowing that, hey, I've got right. some weight there. Whether it did or not, that would be an interesting mm -hmm. thing to, 
maybe look at more and more higher sample size. Right. But you can see the other two were basically flying on the exact same line. Right, yeah. You, for you, the neutral and the T2 there were kind of on top of each other, um, you know, for in terms of the dispersion. Now, this is also only five shots each, and, you know, in a, I guess in a, in a ideal world, we have a lot more shots at our disposal with the sample, but yep. um, I think there was definitely enough here to see the trend, at least for the, the heel two setting, or the H2 yeah. setting, where for whatever reason, you just could turn that thing over pretty easily, and the neutral and the, eight and the T2 setting didn't quite allow you to do that. So yeah. I think that's for sure a takeaway we have from this test. Yeah, and I had this set nine degrees A1. Yeah. So that's important to bring up is, you know, I like to play a little more upright driver. I mm -hmm. also have a driver that doesn't have the ability to change the center of gravity on it either. Mm -hmm. So this is just another way, if you like maybe a, a more neutral lie angle, putting the weight in the heel, another way to help with that bias. Yeah. The other obvious, obvious ways is, Lying. We can yeah. play a little more upright to, I don't like hitting the ball right. Those shots that are, though, that group in yeah. the four over there that's more than 25 yeah. yards right of, right of center. Those, I, are, those yeah. are yucky to you. Those are, those, yeah, those are not fun. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's good to have that discussion with your customers when they come in for a fitting. You know, ask what kind of shot shape they like, what are they yeah. fighting, and what we can try and get them to. And right. this is just another way another bias to get mm -hmm. to help with regards to shot shaping. Yeah, there's so many different avenues to, you know, drive the performance of the club to cater to what the golfer is looking for. And this is another one with the TSR3 driver, that weight track, and clearly there's some effect there that we saw, at least for sure in the H2 setting, and I imagine <sighs> in a different test someday we'll try it again and we'd probably get a similar result the other way with the T2 setting. So uh, great stuff today, Thomas. Really good testing, some good drives too. I mean, all things considered, you hit the ball pretty consistently there well over 300 yards, so some good bombs there. And golfers, if you're interested in the TSR3 driver, you can get a fit at second swing. Uh, but also just ask our fitters if you're curious about what driver setting you might need to play. Uh, our fitters are gonna absolutely have that answer for you and able to, whatever settings you might have on your driver, weight, uh, adjustable hosel, whatever it might be, we can help you fine tune it for your game. So make sure you schedule that fitting today. Thomas, thank you again for joining.